Set into a living trust uh, can be d done one of several ways, and I'm going to give you the best way, and then I'm going to tell you some other ways. Uh, the best way to do it, of course, is to go to a qualified lawyer who knows what the heck they're doing. Most lawyers, frankly, don't know what they're doing when it comes to living trust, and most software programs don't know exactly what they're doing when it comes to living trust, and most salesmen, yes, these things are sold by salesmen, don't know what they're doing when they're doing a living trust either. But if you go to a qualified lawyer, or you decide you want to set one up yourself, it's possible to do, but the key to a living trust is more than just the trust document. It's making sure that the trust is funded. Now, what I mean when I say a trust is funded is the trust needs to own your assets. It's not just a stack of papers. I have a trust. Great. I have a will. Great. The way a trust works is the trust owns your assets. You have to literally take your bank account and take it out of your name and put it in the name of your trust. You have to take your stocks and your bonds and your other securities, your other investments, and put them in the name of the trust, in your name as trustee of your trust. If it's real estate, it's going to take a deed, a deed from you individually to you as trustee of your trust. We don't put IRAs in. They have some tax issues. We typically don't put annuities in because they can have some tax issues. But everything else that you own should probably be in the name of the trust. If it's in the name of the trust and you're incapacitated, whoever you picked as trustee can manage those assets. When you pass away, if they're in the name of the trust, we can avoid probate. You can give your assets to your loved ones with a minimum amount of legal fees, a minimal amount of delay, and maximizing the privacy. Nobody knows what they got, how they got it, where it is or anything about you.